Every year around this time, people take time out to focus on Thanksgiving, to practice gratitude. There are so many things to be thankful for in life. People often mention family, friends, life and happiness on their gratitude lists. But this Bible hero we're looking at today reminds us of something more important. The story of Mary Magdalene shows that we as humans should be more grateful for forgiveness than anything else. The forgiveness of God makes all the difference. It means we can leave the past behind and step confidently into the future. It's incredibly good news. By the time Mary first met Jesus, she had hit rock bottom. She was possessed by demons and was scaring an immense amount of regret and shame about her past. To most people around her, Mary was a lost case. There seemed to be no hope for someone who had done the things she was known for. Most people had given up on Mary. But Jesus was different. He saw a bright future for Mary, dramatically different from her earlier life. He knew the past should not be allowed to define Mary's future. Jesus cast seven demons out of Mary. He forgave her for the mistakes of the past and he loved her. He gave her hope and she loved him fiercely for it. She had been forgiven of much, so she loved much. It's worth pausing here and remembering the forgiveness Jesus offered to Mary and the hope that completely changed her life. This is available to us too. Sometimes it's easy to feel that God might be able to forgive others, but not us. For some reason, our sins seem too great, our past too ugly for God to forgive. But nothing could be further from the truth. The story of Mary should leave nobody with any doubt that God forgives anyone that sincerely chooses to leave the past behind and follow Him. This includes you. Yeah, you listening to me right now and me. Let's gratefully accept this forgiveness, just like Mary Magdalene. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. This is found in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Let's take God at His word as Mary Magdalene did. This Bible hero dedicated her life to following Jesus and helping Him. Mary knew what it meant to serve. She was a very important part of Jesus' ministry on earth. She stuck with Him as part of a group of women who helped Jesus and His disciples in their ministry. The loyalty and fearlessness of Mary's love for Jesus made her stand out. Even people in Jesus' inner circle deserted Him when the time came for Him to be tried and crucified. These other disciples let their fears persuade them to desert Jesus. Mary was not that way. She was the kind of friend that was even more loyal than family. She was with Jesus in the most difficult times, just as He had been with her in happier days. Speaking of happier days, Jesus had often been a guest at the home of Mary and her siblings, Martha and Lazarus. Mary and Martha looked after Jesus and his disciples when they would rest in their home. During one of these visits, there was some tension at the home. Martha got annoyed with Mary because Mary was sitting and listening to Jesus instead of helping her with meal preparations. To Martha, Mary was not pulling her own weight as she sat at Jesus' feet. Martha was a busybody and could not believe her sister's behavior. Those of us with type A personalities can relate to Martha. We would have been tempted to lecture Mary and remind her of all the work that remained unfinished. If you have your Bibles there, open with me to the book of Luke. This is what it reads. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had been made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but a few things are needed. 
Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. What Jesus was saying was that despite how the situation looked to Martha, her sister Mary was paying attention to what was really important. Mary should not have been critiqued for valuing a conversation with Jesus over the business of life. Mary got to the heart of the matter. She sought out a relationship with Jesus. In today's society, that message could not be more relevant. We are incredibly rushed. Everything seems urgent. We are always playing catch up with our rush. And we can easily lose sight of what's important. We forget to prioritize our relationship with Jesus. We don't stop to listen. We are all Marthas. <laughs> and we should learn from Mary. Putting first things first is heroic. It's why Mary is remembered and admired. On a day-to-day -day level, we can learn from Mary's example and take special time to be with Jesus through prayer and Bible study. There may be a million pressing things on your agenda, but nothing should take the place of your connection with God. Protect it as fiercely as Mary valued her time with Jesus. At another point, Mary and Martha went through an incredibly difficult chapter of life when their brother Lazarus died. They were a tightly knit, loving family, and losing Lazarus caused the sisters incredible pain. The death of Lazarus was a crushing blow to Jesus as well. He loved Lazarus and felt the pain of his passing. Jesus arrived in Bethany where his friend was buried four days after he died. When Jesus got there, the sisters were grieving openly. The pain of losing their brother was unbearable. And they told Jesus that if he had been there, Lazarus would not have died. Jesus was incredibly sad as he saw his friends in so much pain. John 11, 39-44, it starts uh, by saying that uh, Jesus asked them to roll the stone covering the grave of Lazarus. And, and this is what it says. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you will always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you have sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Jesus had shown the great love he had for his friends and the special bond he shared with Mary, Lazarus and Martha. He had also shown those present that not even the grave could stop his mission. Death would not have the last say. Mary got to witness this power firsthand. She knew deep inside that death had no power, especially when Jesus was concerned. She had total confidence in Jesus, and the pain of her brother's death was washed away by the joy of the resurrections Jesus offered to Lazarus and anyone else that believed him and accepted his love. Jesus wants us to have the same unshakable faith he wants us to have this hope in the face of death. The joy Mary felt when her brother came back to life can be ours as we anticipate being able to live forever with God. On another visit Jesus made to Bethany, he visited Simon, a former leper who was also a powerful Pharisee. Jesus had healed Simon from the disease and Simon had thrown a party at his home to thank him. As was often the case, Mary Magdalene was with Jesus. She was so anxious to hear what he had to say, Mary hung on his very word. She was so grateful for the hope Jesus gave her. Mary wanted to show her love for Jesus and her gratitude for the new life that he offered. 
she decided to show her devotion in a very tangible way. Spending a very large amount of money, her own money, Mary brought an alabaster box of a special perfume. She poured this ointment on the head and feet of Jesus. This was a really emotional moment for Mary, and she was kneeling and crying as she thought of what Jesus had done for her and how he had changed her life. Mary dried the feet of Jesus with her hair as a demonstration of her love and devotion to the friend that had given her a clean slate. Mary's expression of gratitude was not meant to be shown or or, or as, a, as a public demonstration. It, was, it wasn't meant to be showy. But the smell of the perfume, of course, attracted a lot of attention. Right away, people knew something very special had taken place. Not everyone reacted well to her gesture. No, no, no. Judas, who would later go on to betray Jesus, was highly critical of Mary. He focused on finances, accusing Mary of wasting resources that could have been used to the poor. As the treasurer among the disciples, Judas was really thinking about how he could have used the money instead. As with his careless critique, Judas threatened to ruin a beautiful moment between Mary and Jesus. Despite his greedy disciples' harsh words, Jesus was careful to lift Mary up and encourage her. He could see that she was distressed and embarrassed by the attention, and, and he told those present, to leave her alone. In Matthew 26, 10 to 13, it reads, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I tell you, Wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will always be told in memory of her. Jesus forgave Mary and her sins and accepted her show of devotion. He blessed her sacrificial gift. In part, what Jesus was showing us is that we should never pour scorn on the way others are called to show their love and gratitude to God. We are all very different from each other, and although the same God loves us all, the way we respond to His love and show our gratitude is going to be different. That is okay. That is beautiful. The God that created us as unique calls us to serve in distinctive ways, harnessing the talents and gifts that He has given us. What really stood out about Mary Magdalene was how true a friend she was to Jesus. She was the real deal. It was not dumb luck that led her being in the first group of people to see Jesus' empty tomb following the resurrection. Mary rushed with a group of women to Jesus' tomb Sunday morning. The aim was to prepare his body with the spices and herbs. The death of Jesus had left them heartbroken and they wanted to honor him even in death. The women arrived at the tomb from different directions. Unsurprisingly, Mary was the first on the scene. She noticed a stone at the entrance of the tomb. She noticed it had been rolled away. Mary quickly shared the good news with some disciples. What could this mean? Where was the body? As more of the women got to the tomb, a special messenger was there. It was an angel who told the women not to be afraid, but to instead know Jesus was no longer in the tomb. He was risen. As if to satisfy her curiosity, the angel let the women look around the tomb. And sure enough, Jesus was gone. The angel then sent the women as messengers to the disciples of Jesus' resurrection. The women could barely contain themselves as they rushed back with the happy news to their friends. They were the first to share a message that would circle the globe and change the lives of people for millennia. But Mary Magdalene, had not heard the good news yet. John 20, 11 to 18 tells us, Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said. 
and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This woman with a difficult past, this woman who had been scorned, this fiercely devoted follower had been given the privilege of being the first, the first to see Jesus after his resurrection. There is no question this committed friend of Jesus was one of the great heroes of the Bible. Mary Magdalene had seen with her own eyes what Jesus had done in his life, death and resurrection. She was an eyewitness to the power of Jesus that could change any life and defy death itself. Mary knew the sacrifice paid on our behalf was the life of God, the Son, Jesus. She had seen Jesus pay the price and now she had seen him alive again. As we are reminded of Mary's story in this time of thanksgiving, let us be grateful for the ability to kneel down, ask for forgiveness, and know that we have been forgiven. Let us be grateful that we are offered a new future through Jesus. Like Mary, we can turn a new leaf. Thanks to Mary Magdalene's story and her fierce loyalty to Jesus, we are reminded gratitude for forgiveness is the most important thing that we can think of. It was paid with blood, Jesus' blood, regardless of your mistakes. God can forgive you today. Will you take that offer up with him?